Stand-up comic Eliza Schlesinger plays a stand-up comic and takes center stage in the new Netflix film Good on Paper. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews It, and welcome to my spoiler-free review for the new Netflix film Good on Paper, streaming right now. It stars Elijah Schlesinger, Ryan Hansen, Margaret Cho, and others. Before we get to that, though, I do want to welcome you to Dan Reviews It. If you stumbled across this video, uh, welcome, welcome. Thank you for finding me, and uh, please consider subscribing down below, hitting uh, 800 very soon, I hope. Cross fingers. Uh, so let's get to this new movie. This is available on Netflix, like I said, and Eliza Schlesinger, if you're not familiar, is a little bit of a Netflix darling, even though she's not you know, quite as top tier as some of the other names you might know uh, that are associated with the service. But She's been on her stand-up game for years and years and years. She is a regular panelist on the ABC game show To Tell the Truth. Uh, I think she's done some of the roasts as well on Comedy Central, but she has five stand-up specials on Netflix, including one of the very, very earliest ones they ever did back in 2013. So she has, you know, a, a real pedigree with Netflix. And in fact, she had a minor role in uh, a big Netflix film earlier this year, pieces of a woman she plays uh you know sort of a side character in that but again that was you know a netflix original film so she's uh really got her roots with this uh streaming service and this is more or less her sort of first starring feature film role at least for anything major so uh we're, we're gonna talk about this she plays uh, andrea singer here who is a stand-up herself um and she's always put her stand-up career first but she meets this dude, played by Ryan Hansen, named Dennis, who seems uh, too good to be true. He's just overflowing with charm, um, and so she she decides to let him into her life. Uh, however, her friend Margot, played by Margaret Cho, uh, I guess her, her name is sort of a portmanteau of Margaret Cho, so you got Margot. Um, she's convinced that Dennis is not quite on the level, and uh, it sends her and Andrea on sort of a wild goose chase to sort of uncover the truth about this dude, Dennis. So uh, Dennis is played by Ryan Hansen, who by name you probably won't recognize, but to see him, you probably will. He's been in dozens and dozens and dozens of different TV shows and movies over the last 20 years or so. He was a regular on Veronica Mars. He's had, uh, you know, guest starring roles in almost every major sitcom you can think of recently. Um, he did Happy Endings. He had a regular role for a while on Two Broke Girls, one of my least favorites. Um, but he pops up in movies as well. So you know this guy, even if you don't know that you know him. And then Margaret Cho, you know, she's been around, of course, on the stand up circuit for I don't, 30 plus years, I guess. Uh, and she had her own sitcom in the 90s called All American Girl. Um, and, you know, she, she's uh, been around the block for a while. So it's funny because um, Eliza here is playing this this Andrea woman who is 34 years old. They keep sort of poking fun at like, oh, you're not really 34, whatever. Margaret Cho has got to be in her 50s at least, if not maybe early 60s. She looks great. She looks really like she can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Eliza Schlesinger. So, you know, good job for Margaret on that, um, you know, keeping it 100%. But um, this movie is one of the more divisive ones of the year so far. Um, and I have my own thoughts on it, but I always like to look at the Rotten Tomato score just to kind of see, all right, where do I fall in line with the masses, both critically and uh, in the audience rating. And right now, as of this recording, critically, this movie has a 48% rating, and audience-wise, a 48% rating. So, I mean, talk about your really divisive films. This is it. Um, and there's a big reason for that. I think this this movie actually is sort of three movies in one, because... It comes off at first as a rom-com, and then secondly, it's sort of like a um, girl power chase type of movie. Um, like I said, they go on this wild goose chase to kind of find out the truth about who this guy is or isn't. And then the third part, I can't even really say without giving spoilers, but it becomes this sort of drama of sorts. Um 
that, that I won't really go any further into detail with. So it's really a, a trying to be a lot of things at once. And I think how the three sides of this movie come together for you is where the movie is going to land for you. Also, I think you may need to like uh, Schlesinger as a performer, a, a performer, or at least like her, her sense of style, her sense of humor, um, and her, her sort of comedy timing. If you're unfamiliar with her, you know, maybe you don't know yet, but if you are and you're kind of like, eh, I don't really like her too much, this won't be the movie for you. But if, like me, you're kind of a fan, I think this will have enough laughs to kind of keep you going. And it does this sort of framing thing, uh, a la Seinfeld back in the 90s, because this whole story is sort of coming through uh, on the stage. So we keep flashing back to her, uh, or not even flashing back necessarily, but sort of going to her on the stage, telling the story. So she acts sort of as the narrator in that way, but it's a lot like the original, you know, couple of seasons of Seinfeld where every commercial break or whatever, they would go to Jerry, you know, doing a bit on stage about what's currently happening in the episode, you know, something sort of related. And so here we get that, but it's a little more specific because she's actually telling the audience the story basically as we go along. So I think some may be turned off that, all right, well, maybe this story is better as a stand-up performance, you know, one woman show type of thing than it is as a scripted comedy film. Uh, I, though, did not quite uh, fall under that. I actually really sort of liked a lot of what the movie was doing. I like some of the jokes. I don't, I do not think it all comes together though. I have to say that. I think it's a bit jarring that we have three basically completely separate movies in the mix here. Um, and I think some people may be turned off at the character herself because even as Margot is sort of giving her advice or saying like, Hey, listen, you know, this thing I, I found out about Dennis, do you think that's kind of weird? Like, he might not be on the level. And she just goes along with it at every turn without really questioning it. And that comes across, you know, a little bit annoying for sure. And you're kind of like, okay, like, it's almost like a horror movie where they're warning you and the person still goes down the basement kind of thing blindly, you know. I understand sometimes for narrative sake, you need to sort of have that stuff in place, but... It seemed a little bit far-fetched uh, for this kind of movie. So, look, I fall definitely on the positive side of that 48%. It's a slightly positive grade for me. But I think your your enjoyment may vary based on several different factors. You know, whether you like her style of comedy, whether you like this framing device of her doing the stand-up to tell the story, and uh, whether you can get on board with all three different parts of this movie. Um, you know, in, in sort of chapters almost. It's not like they're all blending together at the same time. So I think there's a lot of factors at play here, but overall, I give Good on Paper a B-. minus. Uh, so that will do it. Thank you so much for watching. We've got uh, a ton more movie reviews. We're now sort of in the summer movie season, even though theaters are still kind of slowly opening. A lot of big movies are out there, so I'm going to try to hit them all as the summer continues. So uh, come on back for the next one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Damn Reviews It. Bye.